Alright, ladies and gentlemen, Baron here. So yeah, good news and uh, not as good news. The good news is, yes, this is a custom user-made B36 Peacemaker in War Thunder. It's got six engines. The bad news is that not all of the engines work. Um, two out of the four Pratt & Whitney radials don't work because for some reason when, you, when you're uh, creating user-made planes in War Thunder, there are some limitations. Um, four engines seems to be the limit, but anyway, let's get into why I'm showing this off because this is not a finished product, but I thought it was a lot of fun and it's been worked on for quite a while and I just want a little bit of a teaser, a little bit of a preview as to something that I'm working on with my team and uh, that is this beast, but why? Okay, so the other day, right, War Thunder had this really cryptic announcement um, on July 22nd. And it was, form up troop, we are now at condition red. I repeat, we are now at condition red. Follow our website or go to Gulag, right? And then everyone was like, what's going on? You know, like, what's with this hangar? Pilots and tankers secret package has arrived from HQ. Full combat readiness is required within the next 24 hours. That was the first one. And in that picture, there was this hangar, N113A7. Um, everyone had their own theories as to what was going on. I was looking at the War Thunder subreddit, and if you're not a part of that, I highly encourage you to check it out as it's a source of really, really good stuff. When I'm bored, I will read the War Thunder reddits and the uh, Total War reddits, and like the stuff that gets put on both of those subreddits for those games is really, really fun. But there was all these different theories, right? So people were like, oh, maybe French tanks are coming. Maybe Italian planes, because it said for pilots and tankers, right? But some people insisted like, well, I hope it's ships, you know, even though it said for pilots and tankers. And people were like, oh, well, you know, there's no ships that are in hangars. And someone's like, well, what if airships are in hangars? So just the amount of hype that was um, sent off of that cryptic tweet was pretty funny to see the discussions that were taking place everyone's theories everyone's hopes um and it turned it out it turned out to not be any of those things but one of the ones that i was genuinely fooled by was someone there was this photoshopped image and they said oh well i looked up this hangar you know in that n113 it's actually the russian symbol um, it's not the, you know, English letter N or whatever you call it. I'm no linguistics person. <laughs> I don't, a linguist? I'm no linguist? Is that what you'd call them? I don't really know. But, um, people were like, yeah, you know, it, it's not the, Ru it's, it's not the English letter. It's the Russian letter. And so people started looking up that hangar. There was this photoshopped image that, oh, you know, it was in this hangar. The TU-95 Bear, which is a four-engine plane, really, really crazy. The Tupolev TU-95, the thing looks awesome. Um, introduced in 1956, the Soviets used it, um, produced from 1952 to 1950, or 1994, over 500 built. The thing is a beast, it's got these huge prop kind of engines. Um, turbo jets if I'm not mistaken and the thing is just crazy and I was like there's no freaking way Gaijin or War Thunder would ever do that there's no way in hell they would be that silly after all there's this rage over the TU-4 uh, the Tupolev TU-4 because the things just just slaughters everything with its 10 23 millimeter cannons and its five turrets off of its oh how about that American B-29 um, I almost said chassis, airframe. Um, I was like, there's just no way they would do that. But it turned out that it was Operation Summer, or Operation S-U-M-M-E-R, um, where you can grind for the four premium vehicles. You got the Focke Wolf 189, the F7 F3, um, the M1, or the M3 Grant, and then the KV-220. And I think that the Focke Wolf 189 and the KV-220 are definitely very very interesting vehicles and i would grind for those um you know some of them don't seem like they'd be really that worth it like you know but it, there's a lot of overlap right so well there can be overlap i don't really know okay but 
So the Operation Summer was like everyone was expecting something crazy to come out of this hangar. Um, the four vehicles were pretty cool, but it was a, it was an interesting marketing kind of mechanic that I that Gaijin used to add some mystery because there's not a whole lot of mystery. Um, like, because at some point they release dev blogs, there's dev servers, so before a patch you always know it's coming. Granted, this wasn't a patch, but this was something that I thought was pretty different. Like, the only thing that you, that um, Gaijin does that you're always kind of like, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm so excited for it, is April Fool's Day. You know, um, which I think Gaijin and War Thunder have done the best on April Fool's of any company. Um, I still remember the Ponyland Air Force when that came out. It literally blew people's minds. Some people raged. Most of us just enjoyed it. But some people were like, why are they adding ponies to the... It's not historical. It's unacceptable. They're jets. It's an ME-163. You know, like... <laughs> but, like, the pony shit was hilarious. The giant snail. You had the ST... The ST-1 walkers. Dude, like... We had pirate battles this last April Fools, and it sucks that it's only July, so we've got to wait like a good seven months till we get to the next April Fools. Um, but you know what? They've always done pretty well with that. So, yeah, like while that was all happening, I thought I I wanted to believe that it was the T95. It was a really good Photoshop, right? Um, it was a pretty pretty good Photoshop done job done that made it seem like there was some article where the TU-95 was built in the N113A7 hangar. Um, but nope, it wasn't that. It was Operation Summer, which is interesting in its own right, but I wouldn't say it necessarily built up or it, it, what would you say, lived up to the hype that I know I had for whatever this mysterious hangar. Like, I reached out to a few contacts that work in the Tovarish Center itself in Gaijub, and none of them knew. So, like, I was like, what's going on? I thought it was something big. But there was one thing that was kind of weird, was that, like, there's some Asian forum or blog post where it's saying, oh, participating in this gets you a chance for the War Thunder Ships Closed Alpha. And there's some anchor program. You know, like, anchor as in what anchors a ship to the bottom of the sea so it, it so it can park you know one of the ways you can park on the high seas is with anchors so I don't really know if you guys have any more <clears throat> excuse me information on that that would be cool but so let me tell you a little bit about this B-36 um, why the B-36 right like Baron why why are you and your team working on the B-36 here's an interesting question I have for you why the fuck not why would I not make the B-36? That thing is insane. The Convair B-36 Peacemaker is huge. You got like these turboprop engines, or you got turbojets, plus you've got radial engines. Like, it's it's really crazy looking. Like, really freaking crazy looking. It's huge. It makes a B-29 look like a, a toy, almost. It definitely makes the B-17 look like a toy, like a remote control plane. B-36 Peacemaker is a beast, and I think because it's so unique, plus we got the Wyvern, which has turbojets, so now, like, Gaijin's like, yo, Tavarishes, we have, we have turbojets in game now, so it's like, why couldn't you do this, right? But I found that, like, when you're, when you're creating these custom models, there's a lot of difficulties with them. There are some limitations, which makes sense. Um... But I thought it would be interesting because it could be a rival to the TU-4, right? But there are some some of the issues I'm that my team and I are having are that there's you know more than one wheels modeling that in and actually having them functional. There's no retractable turrets, so this B-36 is most definitely a work in progress and it's unfinished. And we're kind of trying to figure out if it's worth finishing it because like two of the freaking props don't don't even rotate, which is funny. Um, but so like you got the TU-4 right which is the scourge of the skies there's always been that plane and that like there's always been that plane that has been the scourge of the skies I remember way way back in the day when the ME-163 was one of the scourges back when like you thought BR compression was bad you know back in the day you would get I would get, like when I was still an arcade pilot um, I would get on late at night when the player base dropped a bit 
and I'd be like, I'd be grinding up, you know, and I'd have like my bow fighter and stuff, and I'd be fighting ME163s. There'd be these troll jet jockeys that all they would do is wait. They would wait till that time of day, and they'd come out of their little holes, and they'd start trolling everybody. But with with the TU-4, kind of like the troll plane right now, it's got 10 23mm cannons, 5 turrets, comparing that to the B-29 with only 10 50 caliber machine guns. This B-36 is armed to the teeth. It's got 20mm cannons as opposed to the 50 caliber machine guns. Um, and I'd say overall, it, it's been kind of fun to play with. And it's definitely interesting and unique. Um, and I think it's fun that like what my team and I have been able to accomplish because we created the first working user-made tank, the Char B1 back in the day. But one of the other reasons that we chose the B36 was because the what I showed back in, I believe it was April. In April, yeah, April 16th, I released a video called War Thunder XF85 Goblin Jet. Now, the XF-85 Goblin Jet was a parasite fighter. One of the vehicles it was designed to pop out the belly of was the B-36. So we figured at one point it was like, wouldn't it be cool if we could have the B-36 and drop out an XF-85? And this was when like our thoughts as to what we'd want to do uh, were in the idealistic stage before we met the actual limitations that are placed um, in the engine and I guess in just kind of the CDK and just like what you can make you know in 3d modeling and then what you can put into War Thunder as a user made vehicle but the Char B1 was the first user made tank that worked uh, the Char B1 was a was awesome I want to get back at that because that was kind of like a work it's it was almost completed state but it's I would say it's still not totally completed this uh, B-36 is definitely not totally completed right now. Um, so, you know, just figured that would be kind of cool because there's a lot of parasite aircraft that if you were to implement a system in War Thunder, which is basically the best and most fun and most played kind of flying game, I'd say, right about now and has been for the last couple of years, it seems. And it's the main game I play on this channel. Um, but I, I thought, you know, Parasite Aircraft would be cool. So I wanted to show it off. So this is a, just a work in progress. And, um, but it's fun. And there's, there are some limitations. But so apparently six engines, you can't create them as a user. I'm not really sure. Um, so the Tupolev Tu-95 would work as it only had four engines as opposed to the six of the Peacemaker. So anyway, a little bit of a channel update. I talked about this a little over my second channel. If you're not familiar with that, I've been playing a lot of um, <clears throat> Mountain Blade, uh, Napoleonic Wars, and Total War Warhammer, and throwing in a little bit of Blackwake, which are some of the games you may have seen on the main channel, but I was putting them over the second channel. And like I haven't been consistent with streaming in the last few weeks nor have I really been consistent with the second channel. Um, I'm obviously going, the first channel is the main priority, so that is why it's consistent. You've even gotten a few days where there's been two videos a day, so I hope you've enjoyed that. But, um, so a little bit of an update. I'm moving out of the powerhouse. At this point, the only people still in the powerhouse are Slickbeat and myself. Everyone has already moved out. Some people moved out a long time ago, basically gave up on the project and moved out a while ago. Um, but so I, I have to be out by July 31st and how it's worked out is everyone's kind of left shit and I'm here left holding the bag. Got to make sure it's all cleaned up and cleaned out. But the good thing is, is that in my new place, you know, you always got to remain positive and always got to think of everything as kind of a learning lesson, learning experience. It's all, it's, you can't really control what happens to you, but you can control how you react to it. Right. And so that is what I'm doing. I'm trying to maintain that positivity but the good thing is is that in the new place i'm going to have for the first time since i've been a youtuber i'm going to have my computer basically my office my desk set up my streaming center all that in a different room than where i'm sleeping and i'm very very excited for that because that'll mean i'll be able to sleep better um and i think that will be reflective in the work product and stuff like that so i'm very excited for that exciting things are happening and once that is happening i'm pretty sure that i'm going to stream more 
than I do right now. We'll probably have a more aggressive schedule than just like maybe one or two or three days a week. You know, we'll have theme days. This is something that we're going to be able to explore as a community. That's another thing I'm going to be working on is expanding and increasing um, the ways that we can stay in touch as a community and the things that we can do as a community. You know, well beyond just War Thunder custom battles and servers and, and just playing together. I want I want to look into other ideas. So anyway, a um, bit of a channel update and a little bit of just kind of like what's been going on with, uh, you know, some of the projects I've been working on and just the whole like Operation Summer and just the hype that was built up. I thought it was a perfect time to show you this little project. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys have a great fucking weekend. I'm about to go... Uh, have some dinner with family, and I saw Star Trek the other day, and I thought it was really, really good. Um, and you know what? Yeah, I just started ADD and thinking about the Star Trek movie. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, have a great fucking weekend.